but that Lafayette does have a hunger for a vital community of faith that puts God first, that serves the broken, and that guides people to get just one step closer to Jesus. As we begin these 21 days of prayer to launch us into a renewed and relaunched ministry, we need to prepare ourselves to be less about us. When was the last time you were overwhelmed by the majestic and awesome nature of God? For me, I'm consistently in awe of God whenever I consider the created world around me. One of my favorite passages in the Psalms is this one. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them. God had all this in mind when he made the universe. But the God who did all this, the God who sees all this beauty, the God who has the perfect perspective for all things, is the same God who invites you and me to call him Heavenly Father. In Ecclesiastes 5.2, it says this, God is in heaven and you're on earth, so let your words be few. As a pastor, that's a challenging verse for me. You know, sometimes the words we speak are words of praise. The ocean is so powerful. The sunset is so vibrant. The forest is so tranquil. But sometimes the words we speak are words of criticism. The ocean is so cold. Maybe the forest is just too filled with bugs. But Jesus' words remind us that God is the one who is most worthy of our praise. And really, God is only worthy of our praise. This is one of my favorite roads in Lafayette. Uh, it's the road over the celery bog. This whole thing is weird to me. Apparently, the way they had built the previous road was always just by cutting corners. They put in a road, and then when it sank into the bog, they would put another road to replace it. And when it sank into the bog, they'd do it again. You know, there's this line in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus says, your kingdom come. Talking about our prayer to our Heavenly Father, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, God, I no longer want to do things the way that's most convenient to me. I want your will to be done. Apparently, back when Marsh decided to make donuts, they hired the guy from Mary Lou. I never got to try him because Marsh went out of business. If I show up here looking for something, I'm going to get nothing because nothing is here anymore. And that's why I think Rural King and Marsh, at least what's left of it, are kind of good illustrations for our lesson today. Jesus, when he taught us to pray, the phrase he said was, give us today our daily bread. You don't find the flashy thing in a place like this. You just might find what you need. And here's the truth about God. God loves you. He knows what you need. And if God lets something come into your life, that's because he knows you need it. And if God keeps something out of your life, that's because he knows it will leave you empty. The next part of the Lord's Prayer says, and lead us not into temptation. Now, one of the fascinating things about that is that the Bible clearly tells us that temptation is exactly the one thing God will never lead us into. Well, I, I think Jesus is doing something sneaky there. When I say, God, lead me not into temptation, I'm effectively saying, God, don't lead me anywhere you would not want me to go, but go ahead and lead me anywhere else. I naturally think of this line in the prayer as a request for protection. But Jesus didn't tell us to say, protect us from evil. He told us to use the word, deliver. And the concept of deliverance is very different from the concept of protection. Protection means that whatever is out there can't affect me because I'm protected. But deliverance means that I've already been affected 
Deliver is the word for when you've already lost the battle, when you already have been captured. See, I think Jesus has us use the word deliver because he knows we're already surrounded by evil. We're already being affected by it. We don't need protection. We need deliverance. And so we pray that God would help us to see evil for what it is and that he would deliver us from its power to consume us.